Hi, my name is Hélène Papillon Laroche. Today, I will present you the development of an aircraft IO icing suite using Chapel. I'm currently working on my master's degree in the research team of Professor Eric Lorando at Polytechnic Montreal. Our main research activities are the application of C CFD to aerodynamics and multi-physics simulation. I will start with a brief introduction to aircraft icing simulation. Then I will continue with the reasons why we use CHAPEL. I will go on with our data structure and the challenges we've encountered. And finally, I will present you some results and the outcomes of our work. Ice accretion happens when an aircraft passes through a cloud of water droplets. The droplet will impinge the surface, leading to thermodynamic exchanges and ice will accumulate. This ice accretion leads to changes in the airflow geometry, as presented here, and the performances are greatly affected by this change, resulting in security issues. This is the reason why we want to predict the final ice shape. Here we have the workflow of an icing simulation. First, the framework requires the discretization of the computational domain into a volume mesh in order to resolve the flow field. From the flow resolution, we obtain the air velocity which drives the droplet impingement and the convective heat transfer, which is required for the thermodynamics module. From the droplet solver, we obtain the mass of water that impinge the surface. And then we can compute the thermodynamics exchanges on the surface mesh to obtain the ice accretion map. According to this result, the last step is to deform the initial geometry. To increase the accuracy, we can perform a multi-layer simulation, meaning that we are gradually accumulating the ice by smaller layers to include the impact of that ice into the next flow and droplet simulation. As you can see, the modelization of the ice accretion involves multiple solvers. This means that we have to balance the fidelity of the multiple solver, their performances, and the productivity of the team while we are adding those physical models. We initially used Chapel for the implementation of our flow solver, which was named Chapel Multiphysics simulation or chance. Chapel is indeed adapted for our need as it provides a productive and a natively distributed framework. This, is, this feature is very convenient for us as students because we are in the lab for only two to four years. It allows us to focus more on our research project without the barrier of entry or the more traditional parallel distributed programming as in PI. And finally, the modularity enabled by the object-oriented support in the generic programming of Chapel is important so that students can easily add modules to chips. So what is the base data structure of chips? First, we have an object-oriented structure with generic base classes that were designed to be reused in a multi-physics framework. Secondly, we have a multi-zones uh, framework suitable for the distributed memory computations. To complete the icing framework, we needed to add the treatment of the surface mesh, and we also had to extend gems to the required models, which are the droplet solver, the thermodynamic, and the geometry modules. So the structure of the volume mesh was already suitable for a surface mesh. 
as the only difference between the two is the number of topological dimensions. So the first challenge came from the distribution across the computational nodes. It is performed to better distribute, distribute the volume zones across the locals, which is adapted for the flow and droplet solvers, but it leads to an unbalanced distribution for the surface zones, as you can see here. So on the left, we have the distribution of six volume zones on two local, three for each. However, as you can see on the right, with no redistribution, the local zero contains only one surface in gray, and while the local one contains three surfaces in blue. So how can we rebalance the distribution and reduce the underutilized resources? So in GEMS, the global and generic class involves the distributions. It is a generic class as the mesh type for volume or surface corresponds to a type alias of the class. Thus, we can reuse this same, uh, the same class to handle the redistribution to obtain a balanced configuration as seen on the right figure. The first step is to delete the instance of the global handle class for the volume mesh by simply exiting the scope. Since the geometry changes at the end of the simulation, the volume mesh is not needed after the droplet solver, and this is why we can discard it without restriction. Then, the same class, the global handle class, is instantiated again, but for the surface mesh. And while the instance is initialized, the surface zones are automatically distributed across the locals. The second challenge came from the multiplication of the model physics. We need a flexible structure to enable a productive framework as a same phenomenon can be solved with different schemes. As for example, in CHEMS, we need a viscous model to resolve the turbulence equations of the flow. Different schemes are implemented as the spalar amaras model and the key omega SST model, following this structure. The model handle class is then reused as the base class for any physical module in CHEMS as the thermodynamic model. So it's a pretty simple structure, but we've encountered some unexpected compilation issues. We think it's coming from the combinations of object-oriented programming and generic objects. The definition of the methods for the children objects often requires a tight control with where statements to avoid compilation errors due to non-existent fields or method in parents' classes. Here we have two examples of these statements, the first one being, being heavy and less generic than the intended structure in CHAMPS. Finally, as we added more modules to CHAMPS, the compilation time and the memory requirement became issues especially for the icing executable. Here we have the evolution of the compilation time for each version of CHAMPS. We can see that the compilation time for the icing executable in yellow increases drastically since its addition to CHAMPS. At some point, the compilation could take up to 15 minutes and the memory usage was seen to reach up to 30 gigabytes of memory. Few causes were identified. The overuse of generic function arguments in some modules, the use of too many modules everywhere even when they were not required, the addition of the new modules in CHIMPS, and finally the multiplication of generic function and objects even outside of the program Gen uh, program combination.
we reduce the compilation cost by splitting the compilation in two phases to better distribute the memory peak. The first step being the generation of the C code from the chapel files, and the second being the compilation of the C code. This helps with the memory peak as we are not reaching anymore the 30 gigabyte peak. Then we address the overuse of generic functions, arguments, and the overuse of modules. And finally, we added WAR statements to limit the duplication of generic functions. However, as you can see on the figure of completion time, the optimization performed after the version 1.17 here uh, was lost to in the last version. An hypothesis lies within the WAR statement discussed before but it is yet to be verified. So that concludes the implementation challenges we've encountered. Now I will briefly present you the implemented methods as well as some icing results. We have two approaches in CHIMPS, the deterministic method, which, is, uh, which correspond to the workflow I presented earlier and the stochastic method, which goes as follows. After the resolution of the flow field, we insert a droplet at a random location in the field using the PCG random module implemented in Chapel. The droplet trajectory is then solved to compute the impingement locations on the airflow surface. From there, using an advancing front technique, the ice is generated in a building block manner and the process is repeated until we reach the targeted ice mass. Both methods will allow us to obtain a final ice shape. So here we have the deterministic result for Rhyme Ice case in two and three dimensions. On the left, the pink curves, is the experimental ice shape showing that our final ice shape in dark blue is in great agreement with the expected results. On the right, it is the 3D results for the same case we, uh, we have obtained from a recent implementation of mesh deformation via radial base this function. And finally, here are the results for the stochastic method over two icing conditions, showing again the great agreement with the experimental ice shapes in pink. So with those results, what are the outcomes of our work with Chapel? In an academic context, the framework provided by Chapels allows us to focus on the physics we have to model and it enables a fast prototyping of a variety of physical models. This brings us to our participation to the first icing prediction workshop at the end of July. The workshop will bring together different organizations to compare the icing predictions of well-established CFD codes. It will allow us to assess the fidelity of gems compared to more traditional CFD codes as the ANSYS, NASA, and ONERA codes. That's con that concludes my presentation, and I will be available to answer your questions. So thank you very much for your attention.